This is the convent of La Tourette, built by Le Corbusier at the end of the 1950s. This convent is one of the five utopias built near Lyon in France. The others are the Cité des États-Unis by Tony Garnier, designed in the 1920s and 30s, the Cité des Gratte-Ciel in Villeurbanne by Maurice Leroux, partially inaugurated in 1934, and the Fermini Vert site by Le Corbusier, which is part of a major urban development program after the Second World War. And finally, the Cité des Étoiles in Givor, designed by Jean Renaudy in the 1970s, which embodies a rupture in modern architecture. So what does the term utopie réalisée mean? In fact, the utopia is double. The first utopia is an architectural language, radically different from that used in previous centuries and decades. This language refuses styles, makes no reference to the past, to traditional styles or traditional architecture. It consists of simple, pure, geometrical forms, flat roofs and no ornamentation. The elimination of pitched roofs is perhaps the most evident symbol of the modern movement. Their replacement by roof terraces is a step towards the creation of a universal architecture. Modern movement shapes, typified by the convent of La Tourette, a kind of open-air catalogue, are cylinders, cubes and parallelepipeds, three-dimensional figures formed by six parallelograms. But this architectural language already existed in the Cité des États-Unis and was subsequently used in Firmini and then Givor. Perhaps from this point of view, Villeban is a little different since, while certainly being modern movement architecture, La Cité des Gratte-Ciel harks back to the Art Deco heritage. Traces of decoration still remain, in particular in the very beautiful coloured panes in the stairwells. Urban organisation is nevertheless purely traditional, a symmetrical city with two lines of step-fronted buildings which dictate the way towards the public building par excellence, which closes the prospect, the town hall. In the classical pattern of traditional town organisation and continuing the line of the city de Gratiel behind the town hall lies the Théâtre Populaire. Fermini, on the other hand, is no longer laid out like a traditional city. The buildings no longer line the streets, a change from the street corridors or ribbon development concepts of traditional towns, which nevertheless persist in Tony Garnier's Cité des États-Unis and the Cité des Gratiel in Villeurbanne. So why does this architecture exist? Because these architects are convinced of the need to industrialize building construction and because these simple forms seem easier to execute in concrete and metal than complex forms with ornaments. And, and this is an extremely important point, the period is just after the First World War, i.e. after the shock caused by exacerbated nationalisms and the desire to invent a universal language, i.e. above styles, culture, cultures, religions and races. A language understood by all nations is an architect's dream. And remember that this was the period when the forerunner of the United Nations, the League of Nations, was set up. This quest for mutual understanding was in the spirit of the time. Thus arose the utopia of a radically different architectural language, designed to contribute, and this is the most important, not just to a building project, but to a social building project. The idea of these architects was that architecture and town planning radically transform living conditions. To fully understand the radical nature of these new building and urban planning proposals, we only have to look at how people lived in France at the beginning of the 20th century. The state of housing in France was such that, at the beginning of the 20th century, the country had one of the highest death rates in the world. This was primarily due to poor quality housing and endemic deficiency since the 19th century. Until World War II, no 19th or 20th century government addressed the problem of housing for the masses, nor subsidized housing, nor urban planning meeting modern needs, nor public health and insalubrity. 
So, in Donc, fact, the proposals by the modern movement, both in terms of shapes and as a plan for society, were responses to the appalling conditions prevalent at the beginning of the 20th century. Every utopia built near Lyon testifies to this adventure, commitment, and the changeover from avant-garde to realism. Interestingly, each of the five sites shows how these ideas evolved and progressed, from a pioneering avant-garde utopia before the Second World War, with initially Tony Garnier and Maurice Leroux in Villeurbanne, to the trivialization of the movement after the Second World War and the final phase of rejection and renewal in the 1970s, seen in the work of Jean Renaudy in Givor. Tony Garnier was one of the pioneers of modern architecture and town planning, firstly with the Cité des États-Unis in Lyon. The shapes Tony Garnier invented for the industrial city in the 20s and 30s were no longer avant-garde, but were not generally accepted by most 20th century French architects. And so the Cité des États-Unis is remarkable from that point of view. But what really distinguishes Garnier's work is the progress in comfort, in the quality of the homes, in the floor space provided, all extremely innovative for the time, and which contrasted strongly with the slums from which the new residents of the Cité des États-Unis emerged. Maurice Leroux did the same thing in Villeurbanne. In the 30s, Lazare Goujon entrusted Leroux with the construction of a huge complex in the town centre, probably the biggest in France at that time. The overall plan is completely symbolic. It places social housing in the town centre and surrounds them with top quality public buildings, the town hall, the Théâtre Populaire, a dispensary and other services. The city de Gratiel in Villeurbanne and the city des États-Unis are exceptional both for their quality and their rarity in this period of French history between the two world wars. In fact, it was only the destruction wrought during the Second World War and the need to rebuild two million homes that made the French finally face up to the challenges of modern urban planning and modern living conditions. The solution adopted came to be known as the Politique des Grands Ensembles, a huge housing estate policy which ran from 1953 until 1973. The Cité de Fermenivert was built under this policy, but in my opinion adheres extremely faithfully to the principles of modern town planning defined by Le Corbusier and others. Le Corbusier's plan for Fermenivert includes a cultural center, a stadium, a church, and a unité d'habitat a residential unit using a model he had already tried out in Marseille and which was intended to be copied elsewhere. Fermini is one of the five copies built by Le Corbusier. But most were not as successful as Fermini, as most did not have project managers as dynamic as Eugène Petit. And the Politique des Grands Ensembles was interpreted by many public authorities as a way to build in great quantity, but not necessarily to high urban quality standards. Millions of homes were built over 20 years, simultaneously the high point of the modern movement and its trivialization and impoverishment. By the 1960s, this pioneering architecture had become banal and was rejected. Jean Renaudy was one of the architects thinking about how to renew this universal language without disavowing the initial objectives. He adopted an extremely interesting solution for Givor. The shapes used in the Cité des Étoiles are based on a triangle. Permutations on this theme lead to an extremely complex set of combinations and homes with individual shapes. It is a solution that removes the banality from huge housing estates and long rectangular blocks of identical flats. 
Jean Renaudy tried to individualize homes and people inside collective buildings. The balance between individual and collective is a central topic in Le Corbusier's writings and in the works of these utopian architects. This topic was a major challenge in the 20th century, but this balance has still to be taken up in the 21st century as the population of our planet increases from a few hundreds of million inhabitants to a few billion. The city of Jean Renaudy in Givor is a first experiment and at the same time an initial reaction to trivialization of the modern movement. But Jean Renaudy and the mayor Camille Vallin also shared the will to change society through architecture and to restore individuals' dignity through architectural and urban quality.